Okay, first off, I'm uh, Richard Nolan and I make baskets. And the material I use to make the basket is a black ash. And as you know it right now, the black ash, or all the ash tree trees are getting killed by an uh, emerald ash borer that came here from Asia or somewhere. It's so, uh, just killing our trees. So eventually, we may have no more trees and no more ash baskets. But I imagine that uh, a couple of trees will survive and it'll take a time and years and years, but it'll come back as long as uh, we could keep it going. Uh, to get to this point here, once you have your log, you got your tree, and then you have to go, uh, you have to pound the, you have to pound it to uh, make splints out of it. And then when, then you're ready to start making your baskets. Decide what kind of basket you're gonna make. Look at your splints first, because uh, if you wanna make a large pack basket, you need some good heavy duty splints compared to a small little fancy basket where you need real thin splints. When your tree is growing, go nice and straight like that, your splints are gonna be straight. But if your tree will move in the wind and it twists. And if it twists like that, then the whole tree is twisting. And when you have your splints, if you look, once you pound your splint off, you're gonna see your splint is gonna look crooked. It's gonna look like it wants to make a left turn or a right turn. And those are hard to work with because uh, on a basket you want straight stuff. Okay, here's a, we're in a, my basement. I work here in the winter time. Over here, I have a water trough because uh, your splints have to be wet. So I could soak my stuff over here. And see right over here, when I'll, I'll clean my splints prior to making the baskets there. So basically we go from here to, pound, to soak it, then I take them out and I'll pound them. After I pound it, then I clean them over here. And once they're clean, this is what they look like. Prior to being cleaned, this is what they look like. And if you feel them, they feel a little bit rough. The clean ones feel smooth. Then you look at your splints to see if you have a splints that could make a pack basket or a little small basket. If you have both kind of splints, you have no problem, you can start. Okay, once you decide the basket you're gonna make, most of your baskets are rectangular, some are round. The, the rectangular are called usually utility baskets. It could be a wedding basket, it could be a corn washing basket, it could be a picnic basket, it could be a pack basket. And then your fancy baskets, they're small, they're round, and they have covers on them and you put a lot of color in there and that's why they call them fancy because they, they do look fancy. This here is would be like a, a fancy wedding basket because these have twirls on them. Okay, and in here, this is actually where I do my work now on, on the bench here where I make actually make, uh, I make the, the finished product. So this is gonna be a 10 inch pack basket. Once it's complete, this part here I call the ribs. That's the frame of the basket. The body, which would be the ribbons that go around it to complete the basket. I could make this basket without having it all clamped down on this form, just like this one over here. It makes it a lot easier if I didn't do it this way. All of them, I'm struggling to hold these here. I say these are like little kids. They want to run left and right and all over the place and they want to cooperate with you. If they're down on here like this and you're trying to weave it and you're turning it and they're going every which way but the way you want it to go. When I start making them, I, des I decided to make it a little easier for me and this is what I designed to make it life easier for myself. And these are all, all handles. When you're making baskets, you also learn other, learn other things there because a pack basket has a handle. Utility baskets, they all have handles. So you have to know how to make handles so you have a completed basket. You have forms over here to, for your handles. You have forms over, over here for your, your baskets. Over here you have gauges. The gauges are, are a bunch of little knives on your baskets, if you look at the ribbons, you're going to have some wide ribbons, you're going to have some narrow ribbons, and this cuts the width of it. This goes from, they're one eighth inch wide, this is one inch wide. The smaller the ribbon, the better the basket looks. If you go to a dollar store and buy a basket, they're all the same size and earth. 
Now, if they start playing around with the different sizes, it won't look like it came from the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> Once I complete the basket, I set them up over here, waiting for them to be, hopefully be sold. But if they don't sell, that's okay, because I enjoy looking at them. It's my own little museum. You have uh, fancy baskets. You have some with color on them. There's something with red. There's some with orange. All the rest are, are, are natural. You can make hats, big hampers, big laundry baskets, big picnic baskets, pack baskets, different sizes. If you're going to use a pack basket, you'll pick medicines. And you don't pick uh, all the medicines out there in the, in, the, in the forest there. You just need a small basket there. Now, if you're going out, going out for a few days, you might want to take a larger pack basket, take your sleeping bag and stuff like that. So a ba uh, there's a basket for size for, 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 for your all your needs. Oh, well, yes, you could. <laughs> On your pack basket, if your child is small enough to stand up in there, you can stand up in there while you're walking down the trail. <laughs> Um, why did you start making baskets and how did you learn? What My girlfriend learn? took the Roger Winneritz class over here and when they graduate they make a basket. So she had started a basket, she made a corn washing basket and then she started another basket and she did the bottom part of it, put it off in a corner and every time I come in the house I look at it, I see it there and I see it. And I think it was talking to me, but I wasn't hearing it. And then finally one day I heard it, it said, finish me, finish me. So I finished it and I haven't stopped since. I didn't really know how to make too many baskets. And so I just started learning. I started experimenting, started learning and to trial and error. This one over here is, would be one of the first baskets when I start trying to make baskets on my own, this is what it came out look, looking like. Pretty sure that's what mine would look like. I, I, I didn't throw it away so, so it could so it could keep it, so it remind me what it looked like when I started. And now, today, I went from this to making something like this. And it wasn't overnight. <laughs> <laughs> it was very hard, but if I would have quit, we wouldn't have too many baskets in town. I know since I start making baskets over here, I've had a lot of classes and a whole lot of more than 100 people made baskets. So the baskets are, should be coming back, but at the wrong time when the ash trees are going. I don't know what they're gonna do, but I sure hope that they could just keep it going somehow. Okay, all my baskets I post on uh, Facebook. They're all for sale. Uh, just under my name, Richard Nolan. Do you have them on sale anywhere else in Gahnawaga at any shop? I have a few at Traditions uh, gift shop there. I also like to uh, say, work the old-fashioned way. So you want to learn how to make a basket? Don't contact me on Facebook. Come come sit down with me, talk to me, explain what you want, and I'll go work with you and you can become a basket maker. <laughs>